Welcome to part two of our Toxic Free Living series. We're going to talk today about how to go toxic free in your home and cleaning supplies. This is going to be a video you're not going to want to miss. Welcome everybody, I'm Dr. Melissa Gallagher and I'm so excited to have Lisa here from This Organic Girl. Lisa's a blogger, a green beauty expert, and a guru on all things green and clean. And in today's part two of this video series, if you haven't checked out video one, check up there. There'll be a link as well as a link down below. We're going to talk to you about some ingredients in your home care cleaning products that you may or may not be aware of that are actually causing you toxic harm, hormonal disruption, and a whole assortment of other allergen sources and issues and grief that might be kicking up some autoimmunity. And we're going to answer some of your questions. So I'm so excited to have Lisa back on our channel to talk to us about her expertise in green cleaning and home care. And Lisa, I'm curious, how did you get into being cognizant and conscious of your green cleaning and your home care and supplies at home. What got you into this field? Well, Melissa, um, so I had had my first baby and all went well. And then I had my second baby and he was born with a mild case of eczema. Mm -hmm. I mean, it felt like at the end of the world at that point in time, but now <laughs> looking back, I can call it mild. Um, but I took him to the dermatologist. This is before I was living my green lifestyle. And the dermatologist typically, as he would, recommended some steroid cream. Mm -hmm. And so I started applying it on his hands and the creases of his skin where his knees and his elbows are. It started bleaching his skin light. Mm -hmm. And I just knew, even though I didn't know much about ingredients or that I really had a decision or a choice to make, I just knew that that was wrong mm -hmm. in my gut. Like my mom gut was like going on rapid fire, like <laughs> you need to do something else. So I just started looking into it and come to find out a lot of the stuff that I was putting on mm -hmm. my kid's body and my body mm -hmm. wasn't good for us. Sure. And then come to find out a lot of other stuff wasn't good for us as well, like our rugs, our mattresses. <laughs> I mean, the list goes on and on. And, um, you know, I kind of spiraled one downward spiral mm -hmm. at that point. <laughs> I kind of locked my doors, like didn't leave my house. I started DIYing everything <laughs> from, you know, his lotion. I ordered some tallow and made him a tallow lotion because I know that's like supposed to be good for eczema. Um, and then I, I was like, you know, why not? I'm going to order some organic beetroot powder and I'm going to mix the tallow with that and make myself some blush or some lip balm or whatever. Well, that didn't last long. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's, just it's overwhelming. It like, as a mom yeah. and as like somebody who wants to live their life, I couldn't DIY at all. Yeah. So uh, as usual, when you get you hit a dead end, you look for an alternative. So I started looking for an alternative and that's when I came to find this space online of green beauty. And I ended up making like a lot of friends in the space oh, and I great. trying a lot of things. And then that like, led me to try some alternatives at home sure. and, and so on and so on. So that's great. Well, I'm so excited for you to share with us some of the uh, green cleaning products that you use in your home, because that I think is, I, I've seen it in my practice with a lot of my patients that uh, are extreme cleaners or are professional cleaners or dealing with any type of toxic chemicals. Our cleaning supplies, we know, and there's no doubt, as you know, in video one, if you didn't catch that, we dig into skincare and makeup, and there's some things we just don't know, but with cleaning products, we pretty much are cognizant that there are a lot of chemicals and, and industrial-related chemicals, but to the degree of the impact on our hormone dysregulation and kicking up um, our fat cell toxicity, which then in turn enhances our production of fat and the molecular process within our body. I know as parents, we're very cognizant of it. So in today's video, we're gonna answer several viewer questions. I know many of you wrote in when I asked on my profile, my community profile page, of announcing our three-part series and also asking questions. I'd love to dig right on into Holly's question. Holly asked, what is the safest way to disinfect surfaces, particularly her tub. She said, I struggle with staph infection and I want to reduce not only my harmful exposure, but also reduce my bacterial exposure. So Lisa, what are what's your advice for, for individuals like Holly? Hey Holly, thanks for the question. I think it's a great question and a lot of a lot of moms have the same question, especially when we're dealing with 
what I like to call the peas, the poop, the pee, the puke, you know, of young infancy and stuff like that. I mean, it gets on us. So it's like, gets on the car seat. It's like, what do we do? Um, and I know a lot of people like me, when you first start out, it's like, I'm not going to use anything except for coconut oil and essential oils. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's fine and all, but is it really disinfecting sure. the issue? Mm -hmm. And that's really important. Yeah. Especially when we're talking about our countertops and then feeding on them and all, all that stuff. Yeah. So through my research, I have come across one brand called Force of Nature, mm -hmm. and I love them for so many different reasons. First of all, they're an EPA-registered disinfectant, okay. and it disinfects 99.9% .9 of a myriad of things like staph, mm -hmm. Mercer, um, Influenza A, That's huge. Um, Pseudomonas. I mean, the li listeria, sure. the list goes on and on and on. So the coolest thing about it, though, is it's safe enough to use on a pacifier, but it's, like, strong enough to use on your countertops That's or on your car seat. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's the other thing that I love about it, too, is it's super environmental friendly. So what you do is you buy a kit. It's, the kit's about $80% off, oh, so be sure to check with me first. <laughs> um, and then the kit is basically, like, an electro... I'm not a scientist. <laughs> it like adds all these, breaks down the water in bubbles. So okay. you get a you get a plain jar. What you get is this little vial. In the vial, it has salt, water, and vinegar. Okay. You pop the vial open, put it in the jar, fill the jar with water. You put it on the electrolyzer. It bubbles all up, stops, and then what I do is I end up taking that bottle. I pour it in um, like an amber glass spray bottle okay. that you can get off yeah. Amazon. Sure. And I use that for everything. This is the last amazing thing about it. It cleans everything. Bathroom, kitchen, oh, um, car. Ooh, you know, the car's huge. Yeah, sports equipment. And it's also that's a great. natural deodorizer, too. Oh, that's I mean, there's great. like really nothing it can't do. I mean, okay, it can't scour. So if you're going to like scrub your tile, <laughs> sure. like the bottom when you just try to get the grime yeah. off, like you're going to need to use like a scrub brush, too. Okay. But legit, I mean, that's great. It does so much. Well, and for Holly, with staph infection and just exposure, what I find is a lot of the harmful chemicals actually break down your microbiota. And then also if you're using any type of disinfectants or antibacterials, that also disrupts your skin, your topical microbiota, thereby killing your good healthy bacteria. And that's a big thing that I want you guys to be cognizant of. Not only, you hear me talk a lot about your oral microbiota and your gut microbiota, but we actually have a skin microbiota. And so using something like Force in Nature allows you to maintain healthy bacterial levels, which fights the staph infections and the other infections. And this is applicable for any type of, uh, not only MRSA, but, but moderate pox viral invasion. We also see this with the cases of shingles. And so minimizing that antibacterial component, stripping your skin microbiota is huge. I mm -hmm. love that. Yeah. I love that as an option. I love it. You can use it everywhere. Absolutely. Um, I, the one thing I want to add to it does have a mild smell of like bleach, Okay. but it's definitely not bleach. Okay. Um, I have like a whole write up on my blog. I have awesome. before and after pictures. Okay. I have, I talked to the company about what that exact smell mm -hmm. is and what happens is when you electrolysize the salt water and vinegar, sure. it morphs into mm -hmm. two new chemicals yep. and I break that down as well. And so that's, it, that's what it is. But I wanted to mention it because anybody who's has maybe some chem chemical sensitivities or oh, just yeah. to smells, mm -hmm. like people with multiple chemical sensitivities are also usually okay. like smells bother them. Mm -hmm. So that may, although to me, I love using it because it smells good yeah. and it smells clean. Sure. You yeah. Know? The clean, <laughs> I mean, who doesn't clean. love that clean smell? It makes you think, oh my gosh, the bleachy smell, right? Yeah. Is that kind of mindset where it's like, clean it doesn't have to smell like bleach right like my husband comes home he's like smells it smells clean in here and I'm like it really does yeah that's it's pretty great. much like, it, I love that that's, that's like my all-time go-to okay. I mean of course there's other cleaner options too I'm not saying that's the only one but for the sake of simplicity and for the sake of a f a efficacy mm -hmm. like that that is a great option and the refills are only 80 cents oh my goodness oh, yeah. so how long would you say that component so is that the vial would you use that in a full cleaning so the vial itself after you make it and you get a full bottle okay. that lasts two weeks wow. you know shelf stable sure. because yeah. the bubbles will then deflate mm -hmm. and then it's not right. active anymore but I it depends on how much you clean I mean it, that'll last me a couple of four or five days sure yeah that's great mm -hmm. that's really affordable. yeah it's cool because you can get like 25 vials for like 20 
25 that's bucks awesome. with shipping or something. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And it comes in the mail. Yeah. Even better. Even yeah. like with some of the naturals, like if it's like Dr. Bronner's, which, which I love too, I use it to yeah. clean my makeup brushes. I'll use it to clean my dishes, like yeah. diluted. Sure. I mean, there's 101 ways you can use Dr. Mm -hmm. Bronner's. But there's always that like soap residue yes. potential. So it's mm -hmm. like you're scrubbing down your counter, then you wipe it down and it's like, is there still that residue yeah. on there? But with Force of Nature, it's literally a water, it's made from, you know, 99% sure. water. Oh, that's and great. so it's spraying out looking in can, uh, having the consistency of water. Yeah. There's no sudsing or anything to That's it. That's great. And you get the chemicals that are going to kill all the bacteria yeah. and not the good bacteria right. on your body, which is huge. Mm -hmm. So in video one, Lisa and I talk a lot about the fragrance in our skincare and makeup, but we, we definitely know that there's fragrance in our home care cleaning supplies. What other fragrances or products with fragrance for cleaning should be we be aware of that we're using buying and maybe don't even think about yeah okay that's a good question because I think one of the easiest things that we can do to reduce the toxic load in terms of fragrance is <laughs> this is like so exact but it's like I feel like it has such a big impact like stop using dryer sheets Ugh. like that's just an easy yeah. way it saves money number mm -hmm. one mm -hmm pretty much the whole thing is just a huge bundle of fragrance yeah. and you're putting it all on your clothes and the venting it's getting into back into your house. I mean, it's just horrible. So like, that's number one, get rid of the dryer sheets. Okay. Instead, you can use like wool dryer balls. That's an option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can even scent the wool dryer balls with like a couple mm -hmm. drops of essential oil. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can even throw a cu couple tennis balls in there. I mean, you don't even have to buy sure. anything new, yeah. really. That's and they have point. tutorials on how to make your own. It's, I yeah. mean, I went there, of course, during my DIY phase. <laughs> Um, so that dry sheets for sure out. And then we have like any sort of, um, uh, air freshener for the car, air freshener for the house, yeah. um, and laundry detergent, of oh, course, is yeah. another, one, another one. And that's huge. Um, just because it's getting back into our water system too. Yeah. And that's huge. Yeah. Staying on our clothes. Um, but as far as the laundry detergent goes, like I gave some of the swaps for the, the dryer sheets, but laundry detergent, for the people who have like multiple chemical sensitivities mm -hmm. and like really can't do any even like essential oils sure. or any type of fragrance, yeah. there are two options that I've tried that I think work really good is the soap nuts. Okay. I don't mm -hmm. know if you, have you tried those? Yes. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yes. So those yes. definitely kind of work. Um, there's even a way that you can, my friend Stephanie has a recipe that I can, if you reach out to me, I'll point you to her, that you can boil down the soap nuts and make a liquid detergent. Oh, great. Yeah. It's really, really kind of cool. smart. Yeah. And then um, the other one that I've tried recently is like, it's called... Terra Meg or Terra, something like that, but it's a basically a bag of magnesium, and you can use it 365 times before you have to replace it, and That's so it's fifty dollars. But basically, you get do your laundry for an entire year That's with fifty awesome. bucks, maybe water, yeah, yeah, pennies, and it doesn't. There's no smell. That's great. Um, so I'm still testing that right now to see how it goes. I think it's working. Like it's one of those things where I'm like, you won't know until yeah. It didn't work. Sure. <laughs> so I've been yeah. using it for about a month. It seems to be working okay. But like for an overall like walk into the store, grab and go option, I do like um, Rebel Green. It's something that I've seen in Whole Foods and that's even certified organic, which is kind of fun. Simply Co is another one. Molly Suds. I mean, there are a ton of uh, options for, um, you know, laundry supplies. And there's a steam remover that I've been wanting to try called Piracy. I hear oh, that works great. really well. That's mm -hmm. huge. I know because stain remover is just something, Ugh. even after three years, I haven't really been able to find something that's going to like yeah. take out blood, take out yeah. marker, Major stuff egg. like that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Crayons. Mm -hmm. We have dogs. We have a lot of, and a senior cat. We have a lot of awesome stuff. Yes. That's why we have chosen wood yeah. <laughs> in our home. A lot easier to clean up than carpet. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed on carpet, but it does still happen. Absolutely. Yeah. But any general cleaner, cleaners, like an all-purpose cleaner, mm -hmm. you know, anything that you're putting them putting in your toilet. I mean, yeah. literally, if you haven't paid attention to um, what you've been buying, just opening up your cleaning closet, and most of that's going to have mm -hmm. fragrance in it. Yeah. And the fragrance, if you if you didn't catch video one, please go back and watch that, because we really dig into all of the aspects uh, and harmful components in fragrance. But fa fragrance stays around, and it, it, it the toxicity of it, I can't underestimate the degree of impact, especially for folks that have allergies, and there's even case studies and clinical research. There's tons of it across the board within the fragrance category. It's a loophole that we're seeing a lot of um, industrial chemicals getting into our bodies and into our cleaning supplies. That's like the workaround for a lot of these companies to sneak stuff in and not tell us. 
So being more cognizant and being a more conscious consumer by voting with our dollar is huge. But more importantly, your health matters and your health is impacted by a lot of these items. And so that's why we're kind of digging into this, because if you are dealing with any type of autoimmunity, skin related um, inflammation, inflammation in the body, swelling, fluid retention, more than likely you're being bombarded, and not even to mention the hormonal aspects, they're being bombarded. We're all being bombarded. I mean, we, case in point, we just ran, or in my clinic here, and we ran to the bathroom. Well, it is like a toxic nightmare in there because they have cleaned overnight and the fragrance is still there. And it's quite possible there might be a plug-in. So I definitely want to dig into this because we have our lovely friend Lois, Lois Lyons, our wonderful community member here. She asked us questions about scented candles. Are they safe? And she's been reading that they could affect hormones. So let's dig into the fragrance more so in our home items like the Blade plugins, our aerosol sprays, and also candles, which is the holiday season, friends. Absolutely. Gifting good candles versus unhealthy candles would be an even better gift for your loved ones. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great question, Lois. And two things I want to add, too. Um, I've read a study, too, that like if you feel overwhelmed with the fact that like I've done so much of this, how can I undo it? Sure. We've seen differences in three days. Like If you eliminate what you're doing now with the fragrance exposure and the parabens and all that stuff, Three days later, you can tell a difference in urine samples. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it's a testament to our detox process, right? Because our body is so resilient. Mm -hmm. So it's like you can make a change this week. Yeah, on your body, and it'll have a significant impact in right. just as little as three days, and it's an accumulative effect. Exactly. And the great. other thing is too, like, oh, if companies are doing it right, they want you to know. Mm -hmm. They're going to be very transparent about what's on their label, about how their product's made, about the lengths that they go through to make their package recyclable, to make their product super clean, to not use a, a preservative that's going to affect your health. So they're going to be toting how great this product is. So if you pick up a product like a laundry, laundry detergent, for example, which I feel like laundry detergents are the biggest culprits of non-disclosure. Yes. Like you cannot find... I, it took me seriously so long to find the ingredients for Deft, like that's oh, supposed yeah. to be the baby right, for kids. detergent yep. that's mm -hmm. supposed to be like safer. Yeah, you can't find it anywhere. Yeah, like I had to search Google Images and like somebody had taken a picture of it on the back, but they don't disclose it. Right. Do you find you have to call the companies? Because that that's what I do. I go in mm -hmm. investigative reporting. <laughs> Pick up a detergent. And you're like, where's the ingredients? Can't find them. Just put it back because it's probably they're not proud of it. Mm -hmm. It's just like a way to yeah. save you time sure. and discouragement. But speaking of candles, yes. So another, that's what made me think of it because a lot of candles also don't disclose mm. what's in the candle. And with a candle, when you break it down, you're looking at the wick. Mm -hmm. You know, a long time ago they, a long time ago, they 80s, still probably do. the eighties. They and, still do. Yeah. They're still lead. They're still lead friends. I think in two thousand and three, they had a law to remove lead from our candle wicks. But you can actually test it. You can you can peel off the little plastic, and if you take your wick and you put it on paper, and any kind of silver, gray kind of matter comes off of it, it's lead. Yeah, not good. Yeah. So we and we're inhaling that, burning we have that, it. Yeah. Um, and then we have um, like what the candle is actually made of. Like the paraffin can mm -hmm. be like sourced from coal tar. Yeah. You know, which is a carcinogen. Absolutely. Um, we have the fragrances that are going into the candle. Yeah. Um, we have like everything that burns off out of that, like phthalates. A absolutely. Yep. Just huge. It's just not healthy, the conventional candles. No. I think what I, I remember way back in the early 2000s when I was digging into it for my own health crisis, I remember hearing, reading and hearing that if you have, you know, those glass candles and you're burning it and it has like black around it, that's the telltale sign that it's got a lot of petroleum. There's this whole processing chemical process to get it down to where it's a candle. That black aspect, not only do you see it here on the, the glass, but imagine that floating through our air, we're inhaling that. So mm -hmm. a lot of us who choose the non-smoking lifestyle, but you're burning tons of soy-oriented candles that might still have some toxicity in them. You can see oh it my on goodness. the ceilings. Yes, like the black absolutely. It's, yeah. it's, it's awful. So those are just like minor little details. So I, I know Lisa's going to share with us an awesome product she recommends. This is a clean alternative. It's called Terra Light. But I do have um, a candle post on my website if you're looking for more options for clean candles. Because this is definitely not the only one, but it's one of my favorites. So I wanted to bring it as an example. Awesome. First of all, I just love the size, don't you? 
I feel like some of the um, more natural candles are just smaller. This has yeah. the three wicks. So I just feel like it's a great gift size, especially for this time of the year. And it's a great ambiance size for this mm -hmm. time of the year, you know, when you're snuggling up on the couch or Absolutely. whatnot. Um, okay, so the cool things about this is, first of all, 100% organic cotton wick. That's, that's I mean, key. Boom. Yeah. Yep. Then um, recyclable and recycled glass is what it's made out of. The wax itself is made out of coconut wax. That's so great. it's vegan friendly. So it's a coconut wax candle. Yeah, exactly. And it's scented with pure essential oils. And right. crafted in California. That's fantastic. Absolutely. So this is great. They have all different scents. This one happens to be lavender. Oh, it smells. It smells delicious. I, I like caught a whiff of that earlier. It smells like a true, like, it's, it smells like essential oil. Yeah, it's legit, like, French lavender. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah. good. Um, so that makes a great holiday gift mm -hmm. for sure. And this is so just so much more safer to burn and enjoy. Yeah. And you still get the ambience and you still get mm -hmm. everything fun that comes with a candle. Sure. You don't have yeah. to forfeit health. And still enjoy a candle, mm -hmm. which is great. Like, it's okay if maybe, like, you, maybe you have a favorite fragrance that you just really don't want to give up. It's like, I love my Burberry bread. I want to wear it on Saturday nights. It's like, fine. Mm -hmm. That's not going to kill you. It's right. not the one thing that you do once in a while that's going to kill you. Sure. It's a thing that you do every single day. But the thing is, the problem with that statement, we don't even know we're doing it every single day. Yeah. We're walking into hotels. We're getting bombarded. Yeah. We're walking into the bathroom. We're getting bombarded. It's like, so we need to take control over the things that we have control out of yes. over because we can't control everything else and we're getting exposed no matter what. Yeah. So one of the things that we have dug into and spoken a lot about today is the fragrance, but not all fragrances are bad, are they? Right. No. So we just wanted to make a small... Um, delineation that when we use the word fragrance we're mostly talking about the fragrances that are kind of concocted with all of these you know tens or hundreds of chemical components but if sometimes a product will list fragrance on it and it will be actually essential oils mm -hmm. sometimes it'll say parentheses essential oils or sometimes if you really want to know when you email the company let's say oh it's our essential oil Blend. Labeling is confusing. It's right. unregulated and it's totally confusing. But essential oils as a fragrance is okay. And then the other thing I wanted to mention too, just because we're saying like don't use fragrances and run from fragrance, doesn't mean that you actually can't use perfume anymore. So right. they do have, they do formulate clean perfumes in either like a base of coconut oil with added essential oils that are masterfully blended. It's not just like it smells like lavender and dirt. <laughs> Apple, lemon, and smoke, right? Like, it doesn't smell like that. Um, or they're formulated in like an organic grape alcohol and then okay. added in. So oh, that's great. Those are some things to kind of yeah. have fun exploring. But because green beauty is becoming more ubiquitous, and even Marcus, I was in there a couple weekends ago, and they have a, like a trending beauty section, and there are some really nice clean brands there as well. And I am going to ask a question that I get a ton from you. I did a little video on water, but one of the biggest questions I think I experience or am asked when I'm out speaking in my clinic and from all you viewers, what do we do about water? I mean, water sources, water and air, I want to dig into further, but particularly water. How do we get all these chemical contaminants right. out of our water? Because the reality is that when we test traditional water that's coming out of your tap, we know for sure there's a degree of statins and we're seeing birth control in our water. Not only that, but we're seeing the chloramine 4 and some of the other really toxic chemicals. Yes. Yeah. So what do you recommend or what do you communicate to your community about filtering water and cleaning our air? Absolutely. So I think that's a great question, Melissa, because that's to me the number one thing you can do to live a healthier lifestyle is to make sure that you're drinking clean water and that your children have access to clean water. And sometimes we think water out of the tap is clean, but essentially we don't really know what's in there. Right. I mean, pharmaceuticals can be in there too. Sure. I mean, it's just a, a mess. It's gross. And so we definitely want to make sure we're filtering. I mean, the ideal situation would be a whole house filter. I, I happen to live in an apartment right now, so it's not an option for me. Um, so I use a bunch of different filters around the house to make sure we're getting clean water. So I love for our drinking water, which I also use when I'm boiling pasta or making coffee or tea. Right. Um, I use the Berkey. I don't know if that's what you have too. I know. I feel like yes. most like wellness yes. junkies have the Berkey. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it's so powerful. You could even bring it camping and you, you fill it with river water. Yeah. And it will like Clear filter that out. And they oh, also yeah. have like fluoride filters in there as well. Um, so I love that. But then I also have a little pod that I can pop in my water bottle. It's called it's Go Pure Pod. This one is good for pets too. Like if you bring your dog to the restaurant or something, That's you huge. pop it in their dog bowl. Yes. Um, and it filters up to 250 gallons of water. 
in essentially saves okay. over 2,000 water bottles, you know, plastic yeah. water bottles, and it filters out 97.9% .9 of possible contaminants or something like that. That's it's like really high. That's six great. This little tiny thing. That's awesome. Yeah, 25 bucks. Powerhouse. $25. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's going on my Amazon. List. Yeah, those two I use the most, but like, um, you know, shower, you can also look into shower filters. I like the Berkey one as well. Um, and then the other filter that we use, outdoor filter for like our hose. Oh, that's huge. Um, yeah. Oh, especially us organic gardeners, you're being really cognizant of what you're putting on your spraying. Like I use neem oil for all my leaves and then if I'm tapping into the home, we're getting all the same yucky tap water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, filtration's huge. I know when you talk a lot about your microbiome for your skin and your gut, but like the dirt has a microbiome too. Right. So when you're putting the water in that, it's just essentially killing the natural microbiome. So yeah. you really do want to. And that it. also helps your plants minimize their exposure to pests and some of those fungus that can burden their leaves. Yeah, I have a post on this organic girl that we can link if you want. It's right. just the top five water filters that I use, so it'll just be easy for you guys to find. We'll put a link down below in the description box where you guys can check that out. Yeah. So let's talk about air, because this is another thing. And I live in a home, you live in an apartment, and many of you may be in either one of those situations. So what do you recommend to naturally filter air, and how have you, from home ownership to apartment, dweller how have you filtered your air yeah that's been interesting coming like having full control of my own house to now like i open up my hallway door and i can smell like the <laughs> disinfectant in the rug mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's yeah. kind of gross yeah. but i think the number one most cheapest and most effective thing we can do at home is just to open up our windows yeah you know keep that's the airflow right. coming mm -hmm. we have off-gassing happening from our furniture to our rugs to the paint on our walls and so that's just constant like contamination in our house so the more fresh air we can get the better even yeah. in the middle of winter if you can just open up your window for five minutes yeah get some fresh air absolutely yeah also beautiful is just getting house plants and there are some house plants are better at filtering the air than other house plants sure. and then out of all of those each plant filters kind of like a different toxin out of the air so it's nice to get like a different that's array. right you can also put plants in your offices as well because that's another area that I know I work with tons of folks that are dealing with mold contamination mm -hmm. either in their home and or their work environments there are a lot of school teachers that are watching this that are dealing with really horrible mold carpets that have not been removed in like 30 years plants can really offset that yeah and you don't have to have a green thumb to to a lot of the, I mean, some plants you do, but fortunately, some of the filtering green plants, like pathos and snake plant, you know, oh, that yes, one's the yes, tall, yes. both of those are really easy to grow, so they don't require a lot of yeah. water. They're not very temperamental about where they are with light and stuff like yeah. that, and those are both really good filters. I also have lavender mm -hmm. on my windowsill. That's kind of a nice fragrance. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Nice. And that's been, that's been alive for a lot longer than I expected. So you can, you can add rosemary and lavender plants also to kind of spruce up the fragrance, but also help clear your hair. I love rosemary for yeah. plant. Rosemary you is just great. like brush it with your hand and it smells nice. good. Oh, it's so wonderful. And we'll be linking down below some ways to test your home, some kits and some additional information. And also the environmental working group, they have so much wonderful information, particularly about deep cleaning and cleaning your home from a green perspective and limiting a lot of those chemicals. So if you want to dig in and really focus in on some of those things to remove, we'll provide you with some resources down below. And Lisa also has some great downloads on her website. We'll link that as well. I am so excited for you guys joining us here today. And for Lisa, she is so awesome to come on to our channel and educate myself and you guys. Lisa, how can we can communicate and connect up with you? Sure. Um, well, I show up on Instagram every day. That's where I love I always say I love my blog, but Instagram's where the party's at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it is. And then my blog is This Organic Girl. So those are the two main places that I'm at. Okay, mm -hmm. wonderful. We'll link those down below. I hope you guys do connect with Lisa. And so, friends, the question of the day is what little health bomb did you learn in our discussion today? What items might you be checking out and removing from your daily household cleaning products and just kind of your everyday house and home items? Comment in the first hour of this video release and you will enter to win a Natural Health Resources Christmas ornament. We're giving away ornaments for every comment winner here during Vlogmas. And do stay tuned. We'll have video three here in a week. We're going to be talking more about keeping 
your children and families toxic free. We're going to do even a bigger dive, deeper dive into some of those products for infants, babies, kids, and our families. I'm so excited to have you guys join me here. And please follow Lisa, this organic girl online. All right, we'll see you on our next video.